How's it going, everyone? Welcome to my first ever episode of Manny's Food Channel. Uh, I hope with this channel I can share some of my favorite uh, recipes and food that I like to eat with every single one of you. And on today's menu, we'll have uh, house-made bulgogi beef with a steamed bao bun and different kind of garnishes and condiments to go on the side as well. So let's get started. So for the bao recipe, here I have two teaspoons of active dry yeast. A quarter cup of canola oil. You can use olive oil or any kind of oil you have in your kitchen as well. Around two tablespoons of sugar. Half a cup of warm water to help activate the yeast. And in this bowl here, I have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and two teaspoons of salt, preferably kosher salt if you have any. So here I have around 700 grams of flank steak, but if you can get a fattier cut of meat, more fat, more flavor in terms of the outcome of the bulgogi flavor. Uh, here I have two Asian pears, you can buy that in any kind of uh, supermarket. I have one cup of soy sauce, two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar, uh, two thirds cup of medium diced onions, you can also do sliced onions or grated onions if that's what you prefer, it all depends on the texture. And here I have two tablespoons of sesame oil, uh, two tablespoons of garlic that we will grate, two teaspoons of ginger that we're also going to grate as well, and this is uh, optional, two teaspoons of gochugaru spice, that is a Korean uh, chili that you can buy in Asian supermarkets. Uh, I prefer things a little bit spicy, and if you do as well, you can also substitute with cayenne pepper as well. And finally, we have two teaspoons of uh, grated black pepper. So whenever we're trying to activate yeast, we never want to use salt uh, because the salt will kill the yeast. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add the sugar to the warm water first. And then followed by the yeast. Then we'll give it a, a nice little mix. And then we'll leave it to uh, start to activate, which takes around five to 10 minutes. So with bulgogi beef, you really want thinner slices of beef. You don't want too thick, otherwise the flavor wouldn't penetrate into the meat and it will become a little bit uh, chewy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice really thin slices for the bulgogi beef. And really what we're looking for is kind of paper thin uh, slices so that we can get a really nice kind of texture when we marinate as well as cook the, the beef. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So next we're gonna decor the pear. If you don't have a decor, it's totally fine. You can just cut them in half and take up the decor. The so. And then we're gonna use a bit of a greater, uh, sorry, a bigger kind of great size, and we're gonna start grating the pears. Now that we've uh, grated all our pears, we can add in the rest of the ingredients. So I'll start off with the soy sauce, followed by the onions. Next I'll add the sugar. black pepper and the gochugaru spice. Sesame oil. And last but not least, the grated garlic and grated ginger. Now we'll just give this a quick mix. Make sure all the ingredients are incorporated really nicely. It smells fantastic. Already the aromas that are in this mixture smells amazing. And once everything is mixed in there, then we can add our beef in. Now typically, the longer you marinate it, the better it tastes. Uh, but if you're on in a bit of a rush and you want to have it right away, then marinate meat at least an hour before you're about to cook it. That way some of the marination seeps into the beef. But, um, you can also leave it in the fridge for at least a day and it would definitely have some really nice flavors going through the meat 
when you cook it and have it with your bow as well. So now I'm just going to let this rest. I'm going to let it marinate for about an hour or so, so I'm going to leave it at room temperature. But if you're not going to cook it right away, then you can definitely cover it up, put it back in the fridge, and let it marinate overnight. As you can see here, the yeast has activated really nicely. It's nice and foamy, it's got good volume. So now we can move on to putting together our bao recipe. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this uh, flour mixture a bit of a mix. Because I've had, uh, I added all the, the salt, the baking soda, baking powder, and I want it nicely incorporated. Once it's all mixed, I'm going to start by adding the canola oil. Give that a bit of a mix. And then I'm going to add my yeast mixture. Make sure you scrape off any little bit of yeast that's stuck in the bowl. And now we're just going to mix it. On the side, you can also have a couple tablespoons of water just in case. If uh, for some reason the dough turns out a little bit dry, then you can definitely add in extra amount of water so that it mixes really nicely. So now I'm going to use my hand. It's gonna get sticky here. I'm gonna slowly mix this dough until I have a very firm, pliable bao dough to work with. As you can see, it's starting to come together. As you can see here, my dough is starting to form. I'm not gonna add any water to it because it turned out okay. It's pliable now and everything is starting to stick together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out and knead this for around five minutes, making sure that all the flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, are all will incorporate into the dough. And then when I'm finished, before I put it back in the bowl, I'm gonna put just a little bit, probably about a teaspoon or a tablespoon of oil back in the same bowl, put the dough back, wrap it up and let it rest at room temperature for about an hour so that it pops up and hopefully grows in size. Now that I have finished kneading the dough for around five minutes, I'm gonna put just a touch of canola oil in there into the bowl so it doesn't stick. Give it a quick wipe. The dough in. I'm gonna wrap it in cling film and put it away to let it rest. So now that the, the dough has rested for probably about an hour to hour and a half now, um, as you can see, the dough is probably around close to two times its size. So now we can start by rolling out the dough. Oh, the dough is really smooth, wow. Uh, so with this dough, you don't want to roll it too thin, nor do you want to roll it too thick. You want to roll it to a consistency where you don't feel like you're biting into so much starch. Uh, so what I would probably recommend is uh, rolling out to around a quarter inch or maybe even a little bit bigger than the size of a tuning because we're gonna let it rest again after we cut it out. So it's gonna grow even bigger. And then when we steam it, it's gonna fluff up as well because the steam will help it to, uh, to grow in size. You don't need to flour the surface or anything because you put uh, oil at the bottom of the bowl uh, while you let it rest. So. Now we're going to start by just rolling out the dough. Every so often, flip it over and little by little, clean it out. As you can see, compared to what it was when we first made the dough, it's a lot easier to apply now. It's a lot more pliable and a lot more easier to deal with while we're rolling it out. And this dough should make you around 10 to 12 pieces depending of uh, about depending on uh, you know the size that you make the thickness now that I have finished rolling out my dough I have a cookie cutter here uh, it really depends on what size of cookie cutter or bao that we would like 
Typically, because we're going to fold it in half, we're going to get around half that size there of, uh, of size. So, as I mentioned earlier, you can make around 10 to 12, depending on how thick or thin you roll up the, the dough. You could probably get maybe even more than 12. But before I uh, punch the holes in, I'm just going to make a little mark to make sure at least I have 12. So I'm going to do that. And try and not waste any of the dough. Any excess dough you do have, you could definitely reuse it. So before I go ahead and uh, cut the dough with the cookie cutter, I also cut some uh, parchment paper in the size of probably around two by two, just so that way when we put it on the tray, we can easily take the parchment paper and put it into the steamer, and that way the dough doesn't stick to the tray as well. Uh, so I cut about 12 of these, and now I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting my, my bao dough. So once it's cut, because we're going to let it rest again, it is going to continue to grow inside. So after I cut the dough, I simply just fold it in half. No need to squeeze it because we want it to be very airy. So all we want to do is just seal it just enough so it sticks together, like so. And then put it on the parchment paper diagonally because when it grows it also rises as well from both directions. And all we're going to do is just take this and put it on our uh, tray punch out the rest of the uh, dough, and then let it rest for another half an hour or so, so it uh, continues to, to rise in volume. So I'm gonna continue to cut the dough. Take these out. I'm not crimping it, just roll it in half. Side to side. Grab a parchment paper. Yeah. Alright, now I'm just gonna wrap them and then let them rest for probably about half an hour. But it would be better if you can probably if you can rest it for about an hour. Like this. So now that the bowels have been rested. Uh, we can start putting all the bowels in the steamer. Now, this is a metal one. We tend to steam a lot of our, or cook a lot of steamed items, uh, such as like shao pao or steam buns and that kind of thing. But you can get inexpensive ones uh, from any Asian supermarket, like bamboo ones. I especially like the, the bamboo ones. Uh, they only cost like, I think 10 to $15 to, uh, to buy. Uh, but any steamer will do. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, I have two layers uh, that I can steam my bowels in, but I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna put them in <clears throat> and let them cook from around nine to 12 minutes, I would say. Um, just until you notice that the bowels are starting to get really fluffy and they, tend to change color just a touch into a lighter white shape. So now I'm gonna put a lid on and let it cook. So now I feel the pan is starting to get hot. I'm gonna add just a couple tablespoons of, of oil. One way of making sh of, of checking whether or not your pan is hot enough is how quickly your oil moves from one side to the other. Uh, the other two is, the other way as well is if you want to test out the oil to make sure it's hot, just grab a piece of anything that you're, that you're going to fry and see if you hear a sizzle. If you do, it's ready to go. If it's not, then uh, don't add whatever it is you're trying to heat fry. So as you can see, it's, it's hot enough. So I'm going to add in some more. Do not crowd the pan too much because if you crowd the pan, then again, you're going to boil the meat and that's not what you want. When we caramelize the beef and give color to the beef, it adds more flavor as well. So, just do them in a couple batches. That way you get the same consistency throughout and get this amazing flavor. So as you can see, the meat is caramelizing really well. So 
now this ready this batch is ready to be taken out and start off in a new batch. Let's have a look at the buns. As you can see, they've almost I would say maybe tripled in size actually. They become really thick, they look really fluffy. But now you can tell that it's cooked. It's a little bit spongy. And that color change I was telling you about, and it grew to about two to three times its size. So now we can take it out of the steamer and let it rest. Alright, so now that everything is made, we can just put uh, everything together. Uh, here I made some pickled cucumbers, which I will put in the description below. Uh, it's the same pickling, li pickling liquid as the carrots here. So the great thing about this pickling liquid is you can pickle pretty much any kind of vegetable you like. And it goes really great with this gogi beef here. Uh, so I have pickled cucumbers, pickled carrots, a little bit of sliced green onions, uh, toasted black and white sesame. And here we have just a simple sriracha aioli. Aioli is just a fancy word for, uh, for a mayonnaise dip or sauce kind of thing. Uh, so in here I have just equal parts of sriracha and uh, Japanese mayo, Q-Pie. If you don't have Japanese mayo, uh, you can always use regular mayo, that's totally fine. Um, I like it a little bit spicy so I put more than one part, but if you don't like it too spicy then you can definitely just tone down the spice of the sriracha that you add in. But it definitely goes great with the bulgogi. And as you can see here, our bao has turned out fluffy, light, delicious, stuck together really well. So I, what you're going to do is first you're going to open up a little bit. And then you're going to stuff it with a little bit of beef. Just a touch. And then next up, I'm going to start off with cucumbers. Just a little bit on the side here, not too much. You want a nice bite of everything. A little bit of carrots. A little bit of the sriracha aioli. Just a touch, you don't want it dripping too much. Definitely adds a, adds a great depth of flavor. A little bit of toasted sesame, just on top. And finally, to finish off, a little bit of green onion to finish to give it that extra pizzazz and pop. And there you are, the gogi beef bows. Alright, let's have a quick look here. Bow. How delicious, how amazing, how fluffy, how light. Let's take a bite and see how it is. Absolutely delicious. And there you have it folks. The beef bulgogi bao buns. Mouth watering and absolutely delicious. Hi everyone, uh, first off I would just like to say thank you for watching my video, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, or subscribe to my channel. And uh, give me some feedback as to how I can make the videos better and or what kind of recipes you would like to see in the future. Till next time.